So I'm gonna to present to you the findings of running the XGBoost algorithm against cryptocurrency pricing data on the order book. Now, before we go into lots of technical jargon, we're gonna do a thought experiment. I wanna give you contextually what's going on here. I know a lot of you watched that XGBoost video and have been asking for an update, what's going on? Well, it's taken time to build up the data. I'm gonna talk about that as well. Now that we have the data, I've been running the data through some machine learning algorithms, which I'm actually gonna show you here in this video. I'm gonna show you the exact code as well. Just out of interest, you might just be very interested in it. I find it fascinating. But before we do all of that, let's talk about from a theory point of view, why we might wanna use machine learning when it comes to order book and pricing and volume data. So let's say that I wanna trade Ethereum to the US dollar. Well, there's a lot of things to take into consideration. There's the context of price, there's the historical volume that got traded, there's the size of those trades, how big were they, were they major players, were they just retail traders, and there's the current order book. So what buying and selling opportunities are there in the order book right now? So what's happening on the bids? What's happening on the asks? Have we got a strong buy wall? Have we got a strong sell wall? Is it spoofing? Is it faking? There's so much to take into consideration. Now, if you're not very familiar with the order book, with what actually moves price in cryptocurrency trading, then there is a whole series using TensorFlow that I did on this channel uh, on order flow, order book trading, etc. So I'm pretty sure you can find that playlist uh, and go and watch that because you'll learn a lot about just the fundamental mechanics of trading and so many people trade without even understanding those. So it's really important to have that grasp. However, the whole point of deploying machine learning to this kind of data is to give the machine all of that information and say, look, algorithmically work out for me what should happen with price based on the behavior of this data. And the attempt that I made was to look at this data in a very different way to how everyone else was looking at it with their machine learning algorithms, etc. And I'm gonna take you through that now. But before we go into the actual data, I wanted to just convey it over here. So first of all, I wanted it to look at historical price. What is the price now? I also wanted it to look at the price of Bitcoin as well now in this hour, the closed price. I wanted it to look at the, op the open order books. So what's available on the bids and the asks. I wanted it to look at the trade sizes of historical trades and to basically look at all potential historical trade and order book information. Now that's a lot of data. That's a lot of things to take into account. My hunch was that the more data I give this machine, the better it's going to perform. And actually there is some truth in that, but there's also a lot of falsehood in that, which I'm gonna talk about here in this video. So the first step was pretty challenging because I had to find data and I looked for data. I mean, if you do a order book history, cryptocurrency search, you will come across websites like this. So uh, Keiko, for example, where the data goes anywhere from, you know, 500 euros to 20,000 euros just for that historical data, which I just was not prepared to pay. Uh, I thought that, you know, I understand why this data, data is expensive because they have to store so much data and that is so costly. But really, I thought that that's not something I'm willing to spend because I'm going to need constantly updated data. The, the vision was on the Crypto Wizards platform here to eventually have a tool which actually has a machine learning output. So it has a machine learning algorithm running, giving a percentage likelihood on what the price should be for an asset in the next one hour. That was the idea. Now, there've been a lot of ideas on Crypto Wizards. Only the ones that work are the ones that you will see on here now. And right now I've not put that up here because of the results and I'm gonna take that you through that. But the first thing is I needed the data. And so when we look at machine learning, we see we now have 21 to nearly 22,000 rows of data, which is great. And for those of you who are here, a part of Crypto Wizards, you do not need to pay extra for that data. You don't have to pay 500 euros. You don't have to pay 20,000 euros or whatever, because we've just taken a select few coins. We've taken five coins, Ethereum, EOS, BNB, NEO, and POE. Those are the coins are selected based on really what happens in the outside media and how much does that affect that coin. I wanted to reduce that as much as possible, uh, which is why you actually don't see Bitcoin here, 
but I also wanted to trade some coins that were pretty substantial in size or at least analyze those coins. So for example, let's open Ethereum's data. So I'm gonna open that data set now. And so you just click on it and it'll give it to you in Excel. And this is pretty awesome. Every single row here is an hour of data. So you can see 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 p.m., etc. So every single row here is an hour's snapshot of data. What is the close price at the end of that hour? And for example, on Ethereum's data, if I count the number of rows, I've got 4,370 rows of data, and that increases every day. This data just becomes more valuable every single day. Uh, this is on the Binance Exchange. And so there's a number of columns I've got here. I've got price of Bitcoin to USDT. I've got the current price of Ethereum. I've got the uh, price, what was the price, you know, uh, fifth trades ago? What was the price uh, half trades ago? What was the price full trades ago? So this is actually looking at uh, a, a bit of price history in this one row. And the reason why I wanted to do that was to enable folk who wanted to test this data to do both classification and regression testing, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. The buy size um, is also shown here and the total buy and sell size as well. Now really, you really just need total. You don't need to look at these breakdowns over here. The total's really just the useful part. And then we've got all the asks and bids and I went 10 levels on the bids and 10 levels on the asks. So this is like taking a camera and looking at an order book price history and volume history on an exchange every hour and taking a picture every hour, taking a picture, taking all that data. And that's what's been happening for months and months and months. And now we actually have, you know, 4,000 something rows of data to go and analyze. And I thought this is a great time to now start putting it through XG Boost. Now, predominantly what I'm using XG Boost for, and you can see the code here, is classification. And if you don't know what XG Boost is, go back and watch the previous video on XG Boost. It's basically think of it like the transformer of machine learning. It takes lots of different parts and puts them together to come up with the best sort of tree hierarchy of what should predict what and actually was used very successfully in winning most Kaggle competitions, uh, as well as also football price, uh, sorry, football score, betting, etc. But my thinking was, well, what if we didn't use regression for machine learning testing? So regression is really looking at time series and saying, you know, what should happen in the future? Uh, I wanted to use classification because it was a very different way of looking at it. So I wanted XGBoost to look at the, the order book levels, et cetera, and figure out from that, what should the price be in the next one hour? So in this code over here, what I've done is told it to look at the data, take, take the next row, take what that price was and put it as the current price, et cetera. So when I look at the data over here, you can see there's lots of different ways of carving up and cutting up that data. If you are interested in learning about XG Boost and how to actually do this and what all of this means, you can let me know. I'd be happy to do coding tutorials, but I don't want to really push away folk who are not so interested in the techie side. They just want to understand the results and the analysis, etc. So if that is something you'd see value in, maybe what I could do it is put it actually on the website or something like that. So let me know if coding Python uh, machine learning is something that you're actually looking for. Anyhow, when we run all this code, we get the results. So what I'm going to do is just go straight to the bottom line. And there's something called the confusion matrix and cross validation that we run, which shows how accurate and reliable is this model. And it's 51.2% accurate, which at first was a real bummer. I'm not going to lie. I was hoping for 70, 80% accuracy. I was hoping that all of this order book information would present some kind of pattern that only the machine learning algorithm would find, etc. But what I wanna say is I've done no parameter tuning on this. This is just out of the box XGBoost and XGBoost can do regression as well, which I have not run yet on this data. And so it can do a lot of other stuff. And also there's the STLM, which I'm gonna talk about too in a minute. So there's a lot of things you can do with the data that I haven't even done. This is out of the box and I'm basically 50-50, so throwing a dart at whether the price will go up or down or, or tossing a coin, however you wanna think about it. However, I haven't really done anything, any kind of analysis, 
analysis to say, okay, which columns on here were the most useful and have the most relation to the change in price, where the price goes up or down? Because that's really what this classification means. It means in the next one hour, will the price go up or will it go down? Those are two outcomes. Or will it stay the same? Third potential outcome. So I actually looked at three outcomes. Will it go up, down or stay the same? That's all I really wanted to know because that is powerful information. So there are ways of getting the machine learning algorithm to know, okay, these are the actual more useful columns. So if we cut out all the others and focus on these, these are the ones that you really want to be looking at. So there's a lot of in-depth analysis you can do to find out, okay, from the order book, what here is actually useful information? And does the past position of the order book have anything to do with the future? And it may or may not. So there's a lot more you can do, but what I wanted to talk about now was STLM. So we're really now talking about deep learning, uh, which is different from the XGBoost model, which is machine learning. There is a deep learning neural network model that you can use called STLM, which is short term, short long term memory uh, machine learning. And I have touched on this, I think also in the XGBoost video before. Now, when people out there are teaching that model, the problem is that they're looking at just price and volume, but they're not giving it all of this additional information. And with the XGBoost classification, it's just looking at one row of data, the next row, the next row, the next row, and trying to make decisions of what fits. But with regression and a short long-term memory, it's taking up to any amount of rows you like and looking at all of those and tweaking artificial brain cells, think of it like that, to figure out what the pattern is. So there's a lot we can do with this data there. You know, the cool thing is that this data is also available here. So for you guys who are already on Crypto Wizards, you don't have to pay extra for this. You don't have to pay the hundreds, if not uh, tens of thousands, as we've seen for that data, which is cool. So if you're into the machine learning side, don't ignore the value of what's already here. You might just discover some kind of trend or some kind of machine learning model that is priceless. And that's the cool thing. The data is here to carve up and play with. So I will say that. Uh, however, I am not there yet in terms of developing the STLM and really going into that. And frankly, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on that without having someone who's actually programmed that in a stock market environment, etc., sitting with me to help me work out what are the best ways of cutting that up because you can spend a lot of your time doing that and then it just becomes a learning exercise which is cool but what i'm really looking for is to get results you know we have some useful metrics up here we can see how many arbitrage opportunities there are over one and a half percent right now we can see price momentum as well where we can see how fast certain cryptos are moving in a 5 20 60 120 minute time frame with volume and we've got the number of rows of data I want to add to that. I want to have more metrics saying, you know, Ethereum likelihood of being up in the next hour, X percent. These are the, the kind of things that, you know, we want to keep working on and developing. But I wanted to give you that update. I thought it was super fascinating and super interesting uh, to to play with and to have a look at here. And I'm sure for you data geeks out there watching this, too, you're going to geek out a little bit like me. Catch you guys in the next one.